Hi, and welcome to Dr. Vanderveen's AP Chemistry Podcast. Tonight we're talking about molarity. Now, our objectives for this podcast are to learn the molarity formula, a very simple formula that's also very important. You absolutely need to know this. And then to complete some practice problems so that you are comfortable with the math you need for this very important skill. Let's start with the formula itself. Now, molarity is always given the symbol capital M, and it's the moles of solute over the liters of solution. So that's the total volume, I want to point out. It's not the volume of solvent used. It's the total volume of the final solution that's made. You need to be able to rearrange this formula, and to do that quickly, sometimes you need to solve for the moles of solute. And so just starting from the basic equation, it's easy to see that the moles of solute would equal the molarity times the volume in liters. Another arrangement you might need to do is sometimes, depending on the problem, you might need to solve for the final volume of the solution. And you can find the final volume of the solution by taking the moles of the solute and dividing by the molarity. All I did was some simple rearrangement here. You don't really have to memorize these, but you should be able to do these rearrangements on the fly as you need them. A second version of the formula allows us to take the mass of the solute directly into account. Now, hopefully you remember that the moles of solute, the, or the moles, can be found by the grams of a substance divided by its molar mass. And so all we're doing is substituting this into the molarity formula. So we can say that the molarity is the grams of solute divided by its molar mass, and of course all of this is divided by the volume of solution in liters. Again, you may need to rearrange it. One of the common ways to rearrange it is when you need to solve for grams of solute. So we can say that the grams of solute equals the molarity times the molar mass times the volume in liters. All I did was move things around. Very simple math, but you should, again, be able to do this on the fly. This isn't something you need to memorize. Things to watch out for when you're doing these problems. Many times your volume will be given in milliliters. You need to convert milliliters to liters. Remember, there are 1,000 milliliters into liters. I'm always surprised how many times students forget that. Another thing that comes up frequently, you may be given milligrams of solute. You need to turn that into grams before you convert it into moles. All right. And of course, there are 1,000 milligrams in one gram. Again, you don't want to make silly mistakes there. The general strategy for these problems, anytime you're doing a math-based problem in chemistry, list what you know, set up the problem, substitute and evaluate. So picking up your calculator is actually the last thing you want to do. You also will want to have a periodic table handy so that you can look up molar masses. So let's look at our first problem. All right, so in this problem, we have 32 grams of sodium nitrate. Now, you should know that sodium nitrate is NaNO3. You need to have the correct formula in order to find the correct molar mass. Are added to water and brought to a final volume of 675 milliliters. And the question asks, what's the molarity of the solution? All right, well, let's start by listing what we know. We need the molar mass of sodium nitrate. Well, I've got one sodium at a mass of 22.99 grams per mole, and one nitrogen at 14.01 grams per mole, and three oxygens each at 16 grams per mole. So let me plug all that into my calculator. 22.98 is 14.01. I get a molar mass of about 85.0 grams per mole. Probably could use more precision there. I would go to normally at least two sig figs, or two decimal places here. Um, but we only have three sig figs in our other unit, so this would be adequate. The other thing I noticed is that our volume is given in milliliters, so let's convert that into liters before we forget. We know that there are 1,000 milliliters in a liter, 
So 675 milliliters is 0.675 liters. And we want to find the molarity of the solution. Well, we remember the molarity formula is moles over liters, or we can write it as grams over the molar mass over the volume in liters. So all we have to do now is substitute in. We had 32.0 grams. We have a molar mass of 85.0 grams per mole. Notice how the units of grams will cancel out, leaving us with moles in our numerator. We need to divide by the volume in liters, which is 0.675 liters. So we'll go ahead and just plug all this in. So 32.0 divided by 85.0 divided by 0.675 and the molarity, if I have done this correctly, comes out to be 0.558 molar. I'm only allowed three sig figs. I do want to be careful about that. All right. This is a time when chemists are particularly careful about their significant figures. Let's go on and look at another sample. In this problem, we need to prepare 1.3 liters of a 0.34 molar solution of potassium chloride. How many grams of potassium chloride are needed? Now, potassium chloride has the chemical formula KCl. And the molar mass of KCl is 74.55 grams per mole. So we need to find grams of solute here. And we can work this out from the molarity formula. So we know that the molarity is equal to moles over liters. Similarly, we know that it's equal to the grams over the molar mass over the volume in liters. It's never a bad idea to start from the equation and rearrange the equation for what you want right then. You're not memorizing extra stuff. It only takes a second, and you're less likely to make silly mistakes in terms of your substitution. So when we rearrange this to solve for grams of solute, we can write that the grams equals the molarity times the molar mass times the volume in liters. So we plug all this in. The molarity that we wanted was 0.34 moles per liter. The molar mass was 74.55 grams per mole. And the volume in liters was 1.3 liters. Now if you look at your units, which you always should, the liters cancel out and the units of moles cancel out, leaving us with units of grams. So we know we've set the problem up correctly. So now it's time to get out the calculator and do the calculation. So. 0.34 times 74.55 times 1.3 comes out to 32.95 grams. But you'll notice I'm only allowed two sig figs in my answer. I have two sig figs in the volume and I have two sig figs in the molarity, which means I only need to know my answer to two sig figs. So I'm going to record this as 33 grams as my final answer.